Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Meg and today I'm gonna do a highly requested chicken coop tour. If you watched my last video, the garden tour, you know that I just recently got chickens for the very first time. When I decided I wanted chickens, I did a lot of researching and shopping around for coops and I eventually decided on this coop from Tractor Supply. It's the Producers Pride Chateau Coop. When I was trying to decide if I wanted this coop or not, I searched the internet high and low. I watched every video I could and there were a lot of videos on people assembling the coop, which were very helpful, but I didn't find any videos about how people felt after they'd had the coop for a few months and if they thought that it was worth it, etc. So that's why I'm making this video because I feel like it's a video that it needs to be out there because if you're somebody else that's considering buying this coop, I hope that I can give you some valuable insight and help you make your decision. So before we get into any information about this coop, I just briefly want to touch upon why I went with a mail order coop because anytime I've posted about the coop, that is a common question that I get asked or a common comment that I get is why didn't you build one yourself? Why didn't you have one locally built? And those are valid questions. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the process of why I decided to go with this coop in the first place. The main reason that we didn't build our own coop is because me and my fiance, we are not handy people at all in the slightest. I know how to operate a drill. That's basically it. So I knew that building our own coop was like totally out of the question. I'd considered getting one made for me locally and I actually, I was talking to a guy about building me one and it was gonna be the same price as this coop. But as we were talking more and more about the logistics of getting the coop to my house, I kind of realized like, this is a really high quality build and it's kind of permanent. Like we were just talking about how, you know, the coop would have to come to me pre-assembled and somehow the guy was gonna have to get it through my gates because I live in I live in a suburban neighborhood, kind of more teetering on the edge of urban. I have a small backyard, it's fully fenced in and there's gates that you have to get anything that you want in the backyard. They have to go through those gates and those gates aren't the biggest gates in the world. So he was gonna somehow have to get this huge, heavy, sturdy coop through the gates and drag it all the way into this back corner of my backyard. And as I was thinking about how that would work, I was just like, that, that would be a lot. And for someone like me that's never had chickens before and I really just wanted a starter coop, that just didn't seem like a great option. If I had gone with that locally made coop, it would have been much higher quality. It probably would have lasted a lot longer, but for me in my situation, um, I just, I wanted a starter coop because I had never kept chickens before in my entire life, never even been around chickens. So I wasn't really sure how this was gonna go. And so I, I wanted a starter coop and I didn't want something that was going to be so high quality that it was almost like a permanent structure. And another reason I didn't really want anything permanent is because we don't really see this as our forever home. We're hoping to be here for maybe five more years and whoever buys this house after us, they may not want chickens. And so I, I just wanted something that was easy to put together and easy to take apart if needed in the future. So that's when I decided my decision has to be a mail order coop. So when I first started browsing through all the various coops that you can find online, this coop, it just immediately stuck out to me because it's so cute. Like it's a very aesthetic coop. And so it just stuck out and I was like, wow, that is a really cute coop. Let me click on this. Let me learn more. I saw that it had, you know, pretty decent reviews. I saw that it was in my price range. It was definitely on the max of my budget, but it was in my price range. I, I came to terms with the price and we'll talk about the price in a little bit. So I, I set my heart on this chicken coop. Also, I just wanna say I'm not sponsored. This is not an ad, this is nothing. I'm not sponsored by Tractor Supply or Producers Pride. I bought this with my own money, unfortunately. We finally get this coop and it shows up perfect. Um, it was, n it didn't even look like it was touched during shipping at all. It came in this metal container. It was very protected. It shipped very well. It took my fiance and I about eight hours to assemble this coop. And keep in mind, like I told you, me and my fiance, we are not handy people at all. So if you're somebody that's handy, it'll probably take you half that time, but it took us all the entire day. The instructions were 
okay. They definitely could have been better. There are definitely some things that we did that we had to go back and fix, but honestly, that could just be chalked up to, again, people that aren't handy, that have no experience of building whatsoever. It was actually a lot easier to put together than I thought. I kind of felt like I was just building something really massive <laughs> from Ikea, and I felt really accomplished at the end. I was like, we did that. I would say the most annoying part of putting it together is definitely the roof. A lot of things kind of don't want to line up and you kind of have to force them to line up. Um, so yeah, the roof was a Okay, so let's talk about the coop. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour of the coop and I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the things that I like and then some of the things that I don't really like, some of the things that I had to adjust because I did have to make some adjustments to this. So this is the chicken coop. I'm gonna put all the measurements and dimensions here on the screen, but you've got about 60 square foot of run space, which is really nice. What's not really nice is this coop is marketed to hold 14 chickens. And I just, I think that that would be inhumane. I, I think that that's not enough room to hold 14 chickens. Each chicken needs 10 square foot of run space. So max would be six if you're counting the 60 square foot of run space. I got six chickens and even with six, I feel like it is very, very small and I would feel really bad having six in there without allowing them time to free range. So I would say if you're not, if you're not able to free range the chickens, maybe three or four max. I do like that the coop sits up off the ground. That allows a little more run space underneath and it also allows some shade. It allows them a place to just kind of chill in the shade. They really like hanging out in that spot that's underneath the coop. The run is made with these really nice metal hardware cloth panels. They're half an inch hardware cloth. So they're very, they're like too small for predators to get in. I saw a lot of coops that had much larger spaces and I was like, wow, this is really large. Like mice could definitely get in there. Something could get in there. So I like that this one comes with the really small holes and it's very sturdy. And in the run space, I decided to use sand as the bedding and I'm really glad that I went with sand because I have this little pooper scooper and it's really easy to just come out there and spend five minutes a day just scooping up their poop and dumping the poop right into the compost. I really love the sand and the chickens seem to really love the sand. They're constantly dust bathing in it and I just, I. I love that I went with sand. An important thing about the sand is it can't be play sand. Uh, the sand that like is kind of sticky and holds together when you press it, that's not the kind of sand that you wanna get if you're thinking about doing a sand floor in your run. You wanna go with construction sand. It has much larger pieces of sand and actually mine has some little pebbles that actually the chickens can use as grit. So that's just another added benefit. I think I totally forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, but I've had this coop, I've had my chickens for about eight weeks now so this is my you know review after having them for two months so later down the line I may change my opinion about the sand I don't know but I'm just saying over the last two months I really enjoyed it now let's take a look inside the coop there is a side door that opens and it has this ventilation window that you can open and close it comes with four nesting boxes and four roosting bars and another thing that I really like about this coop is that it comes with a removable plastic floor so it's really easy to clean you can just remove like the whole plastic floor um, and that kind of gives you a barrier in between you know all of the the bedding and the litter and the actual floor of the coop so I really like that it came with that the roof is made out of this plastic material and it has like little bubbles in the roof that kind of allow for the coop to be ventilated so I like that although I do kind of wish that there was just a tiny little ventilation hole at the top maybe and I might end up adding something like that especially in the summer. Now let's talk about some of the adjustments that I had to make with the coop. So when we put the coop together I noticed that there were a lot of gaps especially around the floor and when I was looking into this coop and I was reading reviews a lot of people had that same issue and it was suggested by a lot of people that you uh, caulk the bottom of the floor just to kind of make sure that it's sealed, make sure that there's no gaps 
so the insects can't get through, predators, anything. Um, so that's what I did, and that, you know, that really wasn't a huge issue. I think, you know, a lot of people end up having to do that anyway. One of the bigger issues I had was I had to repaint this entire coop. The coop was marketed as being painted and ready to go, and it, um, I mean, it was painted. It was actually more like it was primed, not painted. The paint was so, so thin. It was already chipping everywhere. And I just took one look and I was like, yep, I'm gonna have to repaint this because this is not gonna fly. I used an exterior semi-gloss paint um, and I actually changed up the accent color, which I kind of wanted to do anyway. It came with this really cute baby blue and it was super cute, but I really wanted like a sage green. So I just kind of, while I was repainting everything, I figured why not? Also had to add extra latches because the knobs that it came with, I wasn't sure that it was gonna be predator proof enough. They say that if a three-year-old toddler can open a door, any door on a chicken coop, a raccoon can do it. And I mean, I don't have children, so I have no idea, I have no idea if a three-year-old toddler could open that or not, but I was thinking in my head, like, they probably could. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry. So I added some extra latches just to make totally sure that my chickens would be safe. And like I said, I live in the suburbs, almost urban, and we don't really have that much wildlife out here. The only thing I've really seen are deer and squirrels. So I'm not like too concerned about predators and I haven't had an issue in the last two months. So um, I think that, you know, those extra latches were, were good enough and <laughs> they're, they're safe. Bedding that I decided to go for in the coop are pine shavings. Um, I've been told by a lot of friends that have chickens that they use pine shavings. So I went with that and I am trying to do the deep litter method um, where you just kind of, you know, you let them kind of soil a layer and then you add a layer of pine shavings and you just keep adding layers and then you clean out the coop totally, remove everything from the coop once every six months. Some people go up to a year, but with this style of coop, I don't really know if it's possible um, because I think that the layers can only go so high um, because the nesting boxes are actually, there's no separation with the nesting boxes and the coop. They kind of all run together. And that's one thing that I don't really love um, I think I'm going to have to add like some kind of curtain or something um, to just kind of separate the nesting boxes because I think that the chickens think that it's just part of the coop and I don't want them to start, you know, pooping in there or sleeping in there or anything. I just feel like if I were to do the deep litter method and it just keep piling up and up and up, it's going to run into the nesting boxes because there's no separation there. So I don't know if maybe I should add some kind of separation, maybe just like a piece of wood. That way they'll just have to like step over and into the nesting boxes. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, what I should do about that. Um, I'm thinking maybe I could get away with cleaning out the coop once every three months instead of every six months because it's been two months so far and honestly it's not bad. I'm just trying to like, you know, triple that and I think that it would be a problem. Another thing that I'm probably going to have to change about the coop is the roosting bars. So I like that it came with the four roosting bars and you know, they're kind of staggered, they're kind of tiered, but they're really skinny and I don't think that the chickens are the most comfortable with those skinny, skinny bars. I think that they would much prefer like at least four inches so that they can put their feet flat on the roosting bars. And that's what I read online as well, is that chickens actually prefer to keep their feet flat instead of curling them around. And that curling can actually sometimes cause bumblefoot and I definitely do not want to ever have to deal with that. I know that I probably will at some point. I just, I've seen photos of it and I, I don't want to cause that kind of pain to my chickens. I like that the bars are removable, but what I'm probably gonna have to do is add like little slats of wood on top of each roosting bar just to kind of make it wider. And then that'll kind of make it like a T shape so that it's still removable so that I can still, you know, take it out and clean it. If that makes sense. I don't know if I explained that the best. Another adjustment I had to make was the ramp was very slick for them. They weren't able to maneuver up the ramp and I probably did that by painting it and I probably should have added some sand or grit or something in with the paint to make it like a more, more traction on the ramp. But what we did was we just added some contact paper in between the knobs and now they can just like zoom up and down that thing totally fine. Now let's talk about the price. So the price of this coupe 
is $1,200 with shipping and tax and everything. It ended up being about $1,500. Do I think that that price is worth it? Yes and no. I definitely think that it's overpriced, but do I feel that I spent good money and do I feel like I'm happy enough with it that I can look back and say like, yeah, that was a good buy or no, that was awful. I look back and I say, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Like I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Like, yes, I did have to make some adjustments. I did have to do some extra stuff. Um, and you know, with the paint and everything, it probably ended up being closer to 1600. And like I said before, I was having talks with somebody local that was gonna build me one for the same price. Or if you can build one yourself, I'm sure it would be much cheaper. Um, so if you're somebody that can go those routes, I definitely would. But like I said, for me and my situation, I definitely feel like it was worth the money. And I tell you what, I cannot wait for that very first $1,600 egg. <laughs> I definitely did not go into chicken keeping thinking that I was going to be saving money on eggs because let's be serious, let's be for real. I don't think that you really save any money on eggs. For me, it's more about, you know, I see, I see my chickens as like my pets and they really make me happy. I definitely feel like taking care of them is something that is just very fulfilling for me. And it's gonna be nice to know exactly where my eggs come from and I also just think that it, it is kind of like connecting me more to nature to just know that, you know, I'm raising things that make the eggs that I'm eating. And it just, it connects me more to my food. And that's what it's about for me. If you live in the suburbs like me and you want a very small backyard flock, I'm sorry, but you're definitely not gonna be saving any money on eggs. Overall, I'm gonna give this coop a four out of five just because I did have to make some adjustments to it that I wasn't expecting, but am I happy with it? Yes. Do I think it was worth the money? For me, yes. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. I'm really happy with it after two months. I've just, I've been having the best time taking care of my chickens and yeah, I, I definitely think that I made the right decision with this coop. Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce you to my girls. Um, I did make a YouTube short about them when I very first got them. Um, I had somebody leave a comment saying that they would love to meet them more and for me to talk about them and their personalities and things. So let's go meet the girls. Actually, I say girls, but unfortunately we have two possible boys and that's gonna be a real bummer for me because where I live, like I said, I'm in suburbs, urban, we aren't allowed to have roosters. And if our neighbor hears a rooster crowing and they were to call on me, I could possibly get you know my chickens taken and I really don't want that to happen. So if they do end up being roosters, I am gonna to have to rehome them. And I've, I'm really gonna hate it because I've, I've gotten attached, but we'll see. I'm still holding out hope that they aren't roosters. Maybe you guys could let me know in the comments what you think. All right, so here are the chickens. I've got some treats over here to kind of entice them to stay over here. This one that's eating from my hand, her name is Theodora, Dora for short, and she is an Easter egger and she's so beautiful. And then this little splashy one is named Charlotte. This is one of the roosters in question. I mean, look at that comb. They're only 12 weeks old, so I don't know. Do you guys think that this is a rooster? She, or he, is a modeled bantam cochin. Both of these are super sweet, super gentle. Dora doesn't really like to be held, but she'll tolerate it, like she doesn't wiggle or anything. Charlotte actually doesn't mind it and has cuddled with me before. Um, so she or he is really, really sweet too. So that's why I'm gonna be super bummed if Charlotte ends up being a rooster. Over here is Cleo. She is a Brahma. She's also super cute and she's gonna be a big girl. Brahmas are really big breeds and I think the girls can get like eight to 10 pounds. She's also super docile and friendly and just like Dora, she doesn't really love to be held but she also doesn't mind it at the same time. Like she's not very squirmish or anything. She's just, she's very polite, very cute, love her. Here we have Zenobia. She is an olive egger. I love her little poof that she's got going on on her head, her little mohawk. I call her my goth girl. She's really friendly, but she's kind of the flightiest of the bunch. She's the one that I think I'm gonna have to worry about hopping the fence for sure. She does not like to be held. 
um, she will get mad at me for holding her along with Marie Antoinette over here. She is a, <laughs> whoa, girls and boys. Marie is a black copper Moran, so she will lay these really dark chocolate looking eggs and they're gonna be so pretty. Marie is definitely, I would say, the most flighty. She does not like being held. She will squirm the entire time. She, like, squawks at me the whole time. She just, she doesn't like to be held. She doesn't like to be touched. So I definitely leave her alone. And then we have little Miss Nefertiti over here. Miss or Mr. This is another possible rooster in question. I don't know. I think, so she's growing in a, a rather large comb and... Also, her feathers are just kind of giving me a little bit rooster vibes. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. But I'm going to be really bummed if Nephi ends up being a rooster because she or he is my absolute favorite. She's so friendly, so docile, lets me pick her up very easily and doesn't like squawk or anything. She'll just like chill in my arms for forever. I'll take her around with me on like garden walks and stuff and she doesn't mind, and she's just like the sweetest. Another reason I think she might be a rooster is because she's very protective of the flock, so I don't know if she's like head hen or if she's rooster, but if I pick up Charlotte, her and Charlotte are best buds, and if I pick up Charlotte, Nephi gets so mad at me. She comes up to me and just squawks and box until I put Charlotte down. Another thing that's interesting is these two twins, it's kind of getting hard to tell them apart. Even though one's an Easter Egger and one's a Brahma, the Easter Egger has Brahma in her, so that's why she's kind of giving Brahma vibes. But they tend to stick together. Like, they have... Oh. Okay. What I was saying is these two twins tend to stick together like in a little click and then these two twins, the two black ones, um, they also tend to stick together and they're like the little troublemakers of the group. They're just very explorative and I feel like they're going to give me issues with the fence later on. And then of course the two roosters and suspect, they tend to stick together. So it's just really interesting to see their little dynamics and their little personalities come out and I still like as they're growing, they're only 12 weeks old so... As they're growing, I'm sure they will have even more of a personality, but they're just so fun to watch. It's like chicken TV. Like, they're just, they're so funny, and I love when they do their little kicks. So I hope that you found this video helpful, especially if you are thinking about getting this coop. I really hope that you found it genuinely helpful because I was looking for this kind of video when I was looking into this coop and I couldn't find it, so... I just, I really hope that you found it helpful. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a like, if you would subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Let me know if you guys like the chicken content, if you wanna see other chicken content. I mean, I, I am a beginner, but I definitely would be open to making some more videos about that. Just, you know, let me know. I hope you all have a beautiful week and I will see you next time, bye.